If you're just getting started as an aviation maintenance technician, or you got a spot as an apprentice in a repair station like I did, you're probably wondering what tools you're going to need on that first day, week, month, six months. In this video, we're going to talk about my top 10 tools to help you hit the ground running and really crush it out of the gate as an AMP apprentice. All right, so we're going to assume you already have a toolbox of some kind, the basic stuff you probably already have sitting at home. But what else do you need? And of course, I'll have a link in the description below to what I actually own and use. First up is you really need some kind of cordless drill or driver, or maybe even both. When you're just starting out on the job, they don't really know what you're capable of, and you're, probably your first task is just going to be opening or closing inspection panels. And some airplanes, like a Navajo, has quite a lot of them. You don't really have the time to do each one with a regular screwdriver, and not to mention your body probably would be hating you for it afterwards. I started on day one with, well, the wrong tool. But after doing the job for a couple weeks, I settled on the Milwaukee 12-volt driver. So some key points on this one as a quick change chuck on it, changing bits as a snap, and sometimes you find a panel with multiple different types of screws in for whatever reason. One of the best things about this driver is that it has an adjustable chuck, so you're less likely to over torque any of the panel screws and strip things out. That is a must. After a few months, I also bought the Milwaukee 12 volt drill with a, you know, the standard chuck, and this gives me a lot more on the job flexibility. But between the two, I'd say to start out with the smaller bit driver. When you're doing a seemingly endless amount of panels on a larger aircraft, you're gonna welcome the lighter weight and size. Next up at number two, and your second most likely job that you're gonna start out with is safety wire pliers. Again, the people you're working for probably don't know what all you're capable of, but they're gonna to wanna to make sure you can at least safety wire. I've quickly learned that you really get what you pay for when it comes to safety wire pliers, and don't cheap out. I've used about five different brands on the job so far, and I highly recommend getting a pair either by Mobar or by SK Tools. Some of the cheaper models break easily or just an absolute pain to use. Now I really like these with what's called the cushion throat. These hold the wire nicely in place after cutting. You know, sometimes you gotta do a lot of safety wire and it's just it's just not worth the time and headache to, to cheap out on that one. Next up at number three is duckbill pliers. You know, I, I never even owned a pair until I started this job and I don't know where they've been all my life. For starters, they're just an all around good, you know, general use plier. But for reaching things back in, you know, engine mounts, whether it's safety wire, zip ties, piano hinge wire, they just, they just do a phenomenal job. I personally use this one that's the Doyle brand from Harbor Freight. Yeah, Harbor Freight. I've been using various Harbor Freight tools for years, and I gotta tell you, they've really stepped up the quality on, on this tiered brand system they have going on now. Number four is a good pair of soft jaw pliers. Sometimes you need to open or remove something, and you really don't want to damage what it is, whether it's a cannon plug, some kind of plastic plug, like on a brake master cylinder. And it's just nice to have that little assurance of uh, the soft jaw pliers. I use this particular model that's made in Japan, and you can actually change out the jaws when they get worn out, because, well, they'll get worn out. We don't want to tear up people's airplanes, right? Number five is a good set of line wrenches. As you get more and more tasks and responsibilities, inevitably you're going to be undoing, whether it's fuel lines, hydraulic lines, something and you really want the right tool for the job. A regular wrench can do it, but having the extended portion on a fitting wrench means you're much less likely to round off that fitting. I recommend this set from Duratech, which is quickly becoming one of my favorite value brands available on Amazon. Everything I've ordered from them so far has just been spot on for the money. Number six, there's definitely some times you're gonna need some low profile wrenches. I mean, these things are about maybe half the thickness of what your traditional wrenches are, but there are certain things that, that there's no other way. It's what you're gonna need. This set that I use has a wide range of sizes and has saved my butt multiple times. Seven, whether it's safety wire, electrical wire, you really need a good pair of wire cutters. But I'm really set on this pair that just makes all of that a breeze, including cotter pins. More than likely, this is a tool you'll be using every day. Next up at number eight is a good pair of flush cut pliers. Now we've already talked about the wire cutters, but they're usually machined at a diagonal cut. The flush cutters are just like the name sounds, they cut at the very bottom edge completely flat. And where these really shine is with zip ties. Nothing like working in an engine compartment and you're moving your hands around and you just get slashed open by the tail of a zip tie that was hanging out that somebody didn't cut off. So use the flush cutter, cut it flush with the end of the zip tie, save yourself and the next guy some trouble. Not to mention it just looks better too. Next up at number nine is all kinds of lights, whether it's handheld or it's on your head. You need lights to see into panels, see around anything you're working on. Even if you're a young guy and you're fresh out of school and you think you could see it all, just put a light on it. You'll see even more than you thought you could. Whether I'm doing a task or some kind of inspection, I always have some kind of light readily available. My go-tos are the Fox Ellie rechargeable headlamp that's pretty much on me all day at work. 
I use it all over and then I put it on the charger at night. No need to mess around with batteries. And of course it has multiple settings and whatnot. But that's what I use all the time and it's been it's been doing it. My other go-to is the Braun handheld light from Harbor Freight that's also rechargeable, has three different light settings, and even has a magnet built into the base. Now yes, most aircraft structures are aluminum, so this doesn't always work. But engine mounts, control systems, there's, you'll find steel somewhere to be able to mount it on. And, and I really like having the option to do either the big floodlight at different, at two different brightness settings, or just the fine detail light. That works really great for doing inspections in tight places. Finally, at number 10 is some kind of tool apron. When you get a new plane in for an annual inspection, you gotta do a test run of some kind, and then you gotta take off your plugs and leads and do a compression test while everything's still hot. You don't really have time to screw around, so having all the tools you need right there, ready to go, and not having to go back and forth to your box, in my mind, is the only way to do it. Some people might give you crap for wearing an apron, but those are also the guys that have to go back and forth to their box a few times. You know who you are. <laughs> I personally use this one from SOE Tactical and man, it, it holds everything I need for that task or any other standard jobs if I can get everything together and have it right there. And SOE is just one of those brands you can really trust to just make a good, tough product that'll stand up to whatever you throw at it. Yes, it's more expensive, but you get what you pay for, right? So that's my list of the top 10 tools you need to hit the ground running as an A&P apprentice. What did you think? If you're already doing the job, what did you need? What tool really sticks out in your mind that somebody new to the game should have? Let us know down below.